hell from the north didn't kill you. The envy evil enemies didn't kill you. The six sad savages didn't kill you. However, goodness, generosity, and grace protected you. Joy protected you. Peace protected you. Kindness protected you. Mercy protected you. Faith protected you. Love protected you. Truth protected you. Persecution is overruled by your protection. Persecution is overruled by your protection. God is our protection. And as long as we know that, we have nothing else to worry about. As long as we know that God is our protection, we don't have nothing else to worry about. And the thing I love, going back to Daniel, is that he had the attitude of Christ. Because he was aware of the persecution coming before it came. He heard about the law that they were signing about. If anybody worships anybody else besides the king, they had to get thrown into the lion's den. Him being prayed up, like what he prayed three times a day. So he clearly had a, a, a relationship with God. So his discernment, he said, okay, yeah, I see what they're doing, what they're trying to do. But he didn't go run and cuss nobody out. He didn't go call nobody out there. He didn't go talk. He didn't get mad or nothing. He stayed in his position. And so him doing that, he went straight to his protector. Mm -hmm. He went straight to his protector for the guidance and the direction. And so when you're aware of persecution coming and you're prepared for it, you will be able to persevere through it. You know, things get rough sometimes. Things do get rough sometimes. And sometimes you can get isolated because of who you serve. Think about that. When you have a renewed mind and a renewed attitude, your friends and contact lists get kind of small. They get a little small. People say, oh, you ain't doing what? Oh, we can't kick it with her. She ain't turning up. Oh, she ain't turning up. Yeah, oh, well, it's like that now. Oh, now you acting funny. You know, you're doing all this. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm just doing what the Lord is telling me to do. So sometimes you feel isolated because of who you serve. But when you are well grounded and know who you are in Christ and know your identity in Christ, you can boldly say, "What then shall I say against these things? That if God be for me." If God be for me, who can be against me? Who can? And if they try to rise up, they will be very foolish. Because like I said many times before, he doesn't lose. He doesn't lose. Persecution overruled by protection. Pastor Noble, when a boxer, when you are a boxer, and you engage in a sparring match at the amateur level, you wear protection. Okay? When you are a football player and you play at this highly competitive sport that requires you to run, jump, and make contact with other individuals, you have the possibility of getting hurt. So guess what you do? You wear protection. When you are in a baseball game and you're trying to hit the home run like Barry Bonds, you have a helmet for protection. When you work in construction or anything that has a lot of do, uh, anything to do with construction, you're trying to finish your work and, and finish what's on the blueprint, but you have a helmet for protection. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why I'm speaking about <laughs> these things of protection of your head, because if your head slash mind oh, gets contaminated or gets injured, then it has tendencies to affect the rest of the body. Okay, so it starts with your mind, mm -hmm. and then everything else will be able to function. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, our generation today has a lot of functional, dysfunctional minds. Uh, they see what they see on TV and try to portray that, and then they're already persecuted before they even start. Because it starts with the mind. They listen to the music that they want to listen to, and then their mind tells them that they can do and act like what is in the music, and guess what? They're already persecuted before it starts. So the importance is that if you have your hand covered, then it will represent who was over you. And who is covering you? Because if you don't have a covering, then you're free. You're free. It's a free for all for you, for your life, because you have nobody covering. You. So it starts with your mind. And you have. You have to. You have to understand that the mind is a powerful thing. The mind is a very powerful thing. People can use it or not. It's just that people can use your mind or not. And so when you're using your mind, it, it will. It will. Your, your thoughts will go to your heart, and then will come out into your actions. 
Okay? And so, if your mind is cont contaminated, nine, nine times out of ten, probably your heart's going to get contaminated. Well, then your actions are going to be contaminated. So it starts with your mind. And now followers of Christ, it said that we would be persecuted for his name's sake. It said that we would be persecuted for his name's sake. Following Christ, we, we are going to get persecuted. So don't, so don't take it by surprise when people are trying to attack you and try to do things to you. It said that's what's going to happen. The Bible says in the second Corinthians 4 and 9, persecuted but not forsaken. Mm -hmm. Cast down but not destroyed. Yeah. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distress. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. But I say to you, love your enemies, though. That can be hard to do. I remember Pastor talking about that a while ago. That can be very complex to do sometimes. Because they have hurt you, put you in danger, slandered you in your family's name, and I still have to love this individual? That's hard. That's hard. But when you're following Christ, what would Jesus do? What would he do? But would, he, would he just leave him in the car? Would he still love him? Definitely still love him. So he says, love your enemies, but bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what did he do? Still went to pray. As soon as he heard the law, he still prayed. He still went to God and said, I'm putting it in your hands. And sometimes that's what we have to do in certain situations. We have to put it in God's hands. That's right. And so, as I get ready to take my seat, I have a question for anybody today. Come on. Have you ever had a lion's den experience? Have you ever had a lion's den experience? Where you were wrongly accused of something? Thrown away like a piece of meat? Taken to a dark place, to unknown territory? And the only thing that you had to rely on and depend on was a prayer and your faith. Yes. Have you ever been in a lion's den experience? Yes. Huh, but you see, this comes back around once again, that if you have the right protection, then it overrules your persecution. Yes. Having a lion's den experience makes your faith stronger. Yes. Makes your forgiveness stronger. Yes. And by having those in a lion's den experience, it will make your favor with God even stronger because you're relying on him. Yes. Having a lion's den experience will help you to see who you really are. Because when you're surrounded by folks who are trying to take you out, mm -hmm. trying to kill you, yes. all you're doing is being able to call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And saying, Lord, I remember you reminded me in your word that blessed are those who are persecuted for the righteousness sake. Yes. For there is in the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you. Yes. Falsely for my sake. Uh -huh. Period. Rejoice. And be exceedingly glad. Mm -hmm. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets were before you. So they can persecute, but my God will execute. Persecution may have been your yesterday, but peace is your now and later. Your protection is your passport to your peace. Your protection is the way out of the situation that you're in. Yeah. Your protection covers you from getting blown away like a house made out of straw because your protection is a solid foundation. Somebody gonna help me preach up in here in a second. Your protection will make your enemies wish they had been your friend. Your protection will never leave you. Never save you. Oh, yeah. Your protection will never allow you to be all the way defeated. Can somebody go help me real quick? I'm going to say it one more time. They can persecute, but my God will execute. Uh, your persecution may have been your yesterday, but peace is your now and later. Uh, your protection is your passport to your peace. Uh, your protection is the way out of the situation that you're in. Your protection covers you from getting blown away like a house made out of straw. Because your protection is a solid foundation. Your protection will make your enemies wish... They haven't been your friends. Your protection will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says, oh, the Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are safe. The Bible says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Bible says uh, that uh, he will know he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. The Bible says the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. 
The Bible says uh, the Lord will watch over your coming and your going. Uh huh. He'll watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. The Bible says the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I be afraid? I like that one, my Lord. I like that, brother boy. I'm gonna say that one more time. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I be afraid? I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. The Bible says, if you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge. The Bible says, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. The Bible says, for he will command his angels. He will command his angels. Uh, to, to concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. The Bible says in the book of Daniel that he was in the lion's den and God sent his angels. He said God sent his angels to shut the lion's mouth. That was Daniel's protection. Somebody gonna help me preach it here today. That was Daniel's protection. Daniel never shook. Daniel never wavered. Daniel did not get faint or weary. But he stayed steadfast, unmovable. He was always abounding in the work of the Lord. That his work was not going to be in vain. Shout glory to God. But Daniel knew that his help was coming from the Lord. He said, although I sleep next to these lions, my ruler was going to get me out of this. Because he said, my rescuer is coming. My protector is coming. My king is coming. And yeah, they call you King Darius. But they said he's the king of kings. And the lords of lords. So he reigns over all. There's nothing impossible for God. Somebody gonna help me preach it here today. So Daniel knew where his protection was coming from. He knew where his protection was coming from. The reason why I have to emphasize on the Bible. Because a lot of our protection comes from the word. Because it will never come back for me. Somebody gonna help me in here today. So Daniel knew that he was gonna make it out of the dark place. I remember when I was a little boy and I was in the dark place and I wasn't trying to hear nobody. I wasn't trying to listen to nobody. But I still had Christ with me because he was walking with me and he was talking with me. And he said, you are my child. You are my child. You are not going to be in the enemy's hand. But I'm going to protect you. Not only am I going to protect you, but I'm going to be able to bring you out. I said, I'm going to be able to bring you out. But the thing that I love is that our protector had to come lay the foundation of the word protection. When he came down clothing humanity, and he said, uh, I said, he said, he said uh, that I gotta be about my father's business. So him being about his father's business, he had to walk around. I said he had to walk around. And he knew, uh, I said he knew who he was dealing with. He saw it already. He saw from A to Z. He saw one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And he said, seven gonna get me to heaven. Shout glory to God. But the thing that I love about our protector is, is that he never wavered. When he seen people being persecuted, he was right there. When he seen people going around their ways, he was right there. I'm one of my favorite things that I see. One of my favorite things that I seen was in the book of John, the eighth chapter, when the woman committed adultery and she was caught in the act by Jesus Christ. And then he said, woman, 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 where are your accusers? Because they were ready to persecute her for committing that sin. They were ready to take her out. And so he said, woman, where are your accusers? They all scampered off. Because they was in the city too. So that means that Jesus was being a protector right there. And then he said, rise and go and sin no more. He said, there's no condemnation for those who are in me. So that means, I said, that means that you got to be in Christ in order to be protected. You walk around with your 45 and a bulletproof vest 
I'm sorry to tell you, but that won't protect you. You can walk around with mace. You can walk around with a pocket knife. You can walk around with anything you want. If you don't got Jesus Christ, you ain't got no protection. Somebody can help me preach here today. But I remember when I was tired of being unprotected. I was tired of being unprotected. And so I told my grandmother on the second row of Rose Hill that I want to go down and get protected. She said, son, I already got my protection. You got to go by yourself. She said, you got to go by yourself. So I had to go walk down. Walk down. Walk down. By myself. But the thing about it was I had to step out on faith. Just like Daniel stepped out on faith. When he prayed to God. Because he knew. I said he knew. His protection was coming. So when I got down to the altar. I said I will lift it by him. And I said I want my protection. He said it's free son. It's free son. It's free. When you go get a bulletproof vest. You got to pay for it. When you go get a gun. You got to pay for it. When you get life insurance, <laughs> you gotta pay for it. When you get your pocket knife, you gotta pay for it. When they get these nuclear bombs, <laughs> they gotta pay for it. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus paid it all. That Jesus paid it all. When he went to Calvary, and he said, I gotta be lifted up. Because if I be lifted up, I'm gonna draw him into me. Come on, it's free, it's free, it's free. So when he went to Galilee, he said, No man taketh my life, but I lay it down free. He was saying that's why he was dying, why he was being persecuted. He was still speaking life during his death. He was still speaking life during his death. And he said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And then he laid his head down. Said it is finished. And so the persecutor's body was all over. The body was all over. But he was going to go away. And he was going to be gone. And he was going to be gone. And so he then went to this borrowed tomb. But they carried him off to. They carried him off to this borrowed tomb. And they thought he was going to be gone all day. They said that the blackness and the darkness represents the black. It represents death. So he's gone in the grave Friday. He's gone in the grave Saturday. He's gone in the grave Saturday. They're saying that God is dead. That he is done. He wasn't who he said he was. It's all over now. It's all over now. They said it was a dark place. Darkness fell above the earth because he was gone. And they said that it was all over. That he was a phony, attacking his character, attacking his religion, saying that it was all over. But surely, 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 on the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. And he walked out white as snow. He told Dr. Thomas, put your hand right here. Put your hand right here. Your protection. Lift your hands and 
Your persecution is overruled by your protection. 